handle the heat. Yeah. You can handle, you can handle the heat. Yeah. Out of system, you can handle the heat. Booyah, Kashan. Welcome back to another episode of Can't Handle the Heat. It's your boy, G. Swizz. Joke City. Mike, I say, what's up, boys? How's it? What's up? You know how it is. So we're in Rockville, Maryland right now at my aunt's house. We are kicking out the tour. We just had our first tour in Baltimore. It was awesome. Uh, it was kind of crazy because we met fans literally point east all the way across the country. And we have fans all the way out here. And it was super cool. We had people showing up with the OG shirts, the OG black shirt, the tank tops. Um, no one with the new the stuff. The OG gauges, of... gauges compliance, getting reinstated shirts. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we tell a story about time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe not right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, long story short, I had to get reinstated in the NCAA for this year. No one really knew about it. I'll get into that later. Uh, another podcast. But also, so I show up one time. It was just crazy to me that we had fans all the way across there. And if you came, it was lovely. It was awesome. Baltimore Beach, thank you for hosting us. Awesome people. Awesome event. Um, but it was crazy because there was one girl... We were there, and I just see you in the out of system tank top, the girls tank top from like the OG days, and I was like, and I remember I was like, oh hey, what's up? And she's like, oh, and I was asking her about stuff, and she's like, oh yeah, I've never played volleyball before, and she's with a friend, and I was like, I was like, wait, you, you never played volleyball? I was like, I was like, then do you ever like watch? She's like, yeah, I kind of watch. I was like, like, no offense, but like, why are you here? Like, how do you like, how do you know of us? And she was like, oh yeah. Um, basically, one day, oh, Wisconsin Volleyball showed up on my feed, it was either on YouTube or TikTok, and then I was like, oh, I like this, so she started watching it, and then our Nicola Haynes show showed up on the huddle, and there was like three people that mentioned the huddle yesterday, and I was like, wow, these are some OG fans, I love the people. The huddle. The huddle. Uh, major throwback. And, uh, she's like, oh yeah, I just started watching it, and I just started watching your stuff. I was like, oh my god, my mind was blown, she was great, everyone else there was great, but, um... One thing we wanted to do with this whole tour that we kind of had in mind is, sh again, showing people ways of how we trained, how we love uh, our way of loving volleyball, and just something that, just something new for people as well. You know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of people, and, and it was different seeing the different niches and the different um, cliques, I and mean, we're going to see it all over the country of the volleyball that's going on and their culture and what they really, really like. We had some pushback, as Mikey likes to say. We're going to get into detail here. Not a fan of the Forest game. They're not a fan of the Forest game. And obviously, 21st Street, shout out to them. Uh, our love for the Forest has grown immensely. Sorry. That's what I not us. We're, we're yeah. a fan of the Forest Exactly. Game. <coughs> our, our, the East Coast our, definitely does not. Yeah. And, and uh, also, adding on Gage, most people, I think, can see that we are not fan. I mean, obviously we play. But we like the untraditional ways of volleyball. The short courts, the fours. Exactly. We don't play just straight Grass up. triples, six Grass nine. triples. Like it all. And so, Those so are our favorites. So that's what we kind of want to bring in these clinics because we don't, I think, do we have another beach clinic at all, Joe? No. This is our only beach, and we're like, you know what, let's do fours and see what they, they, they show them something different, right? And it's not just like going out there and just, it's still going to improve your volleyball. It's not like it's going to get like make you worse or anything like that. Um, so that's what we're thinking in mind. That's what we want to bring in these clinics, something that they've never seen before, and stuff that we love. And this my is gonna go into immense detail here. They, uh, some people were just not fans, but not again. Ninety five percent of those people were having a great time. They were having fun, but some of them, maybe two, uh, were not loving it so much. <laughs> no, basically, well, me and Joe were talking about it before in the car ride. We were like, hopefully, this is like I'm, I'm interested to know because this is our first time having adults. What it's like to coach adults versus kids. Right. And me and Joe were thinking it was going to be a little bit easier. They'd be a little bit more on top of things and easier what to teach. What do you teach. mean by on top of things? Like, you explain a drill and they're, like, engaged when you're talking instead of, like, chatting with friends, you know? Oh, okay. And then, like, they'll actually know the drill and then they'll go out there and be like, do this, do this. Like, a little bit more, catch on to things a little faster. I don't know. I would hope you're smarter at 45 than you were at 15. Better test. Or, smarter. you know, yeah, you can at least... Follow instructions a little better. Right. I don't think that's the case. I actually think teaching adults, they're so much more stuck in their ways. Like, if you were to get a brand new 10-year-old, ten, ten they'd be more willing to open and try anything. And, like, you could kind of mold them, I guess, in a weird way. Maybe that sounds weird. But you could kind of create their game from scratch instead of having to recorrect, like, a lot of bad habits and a lot of, like, this is what I do. I've been doing it for 30 years. And you're like, 
well, it's not working out too well. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we could try it out, another thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Huge shout out to our partner, Dr. Price's Vitamins, for hooking us up with a promo code, out of system 20 to get 20% off on their website. Link is down in the description below. Myself, Micah, Gage are using this product all summer. It's awesome, the electrolytes are sweet. But, um, yeah, one, one, one fan slash, I don't, I, she knew my name, like, she's like, hey, Micah. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe she listens to this, so. Maybe if she's listening. For sure. Who cares? But one Who fan. Cares? Who cares? Um, or probably one, not a fan anymore. Yeah, probably not a fan. <laughs> one person that came to the clinic um, really didn't like the fours, thought it was pointless. And waste of time. A waste of time and doesn't make sense. And I don't know, just the people, yeah. and I'd heard it from a couple other people like, what we they, play doubles here, it's better, it, you get more touches, you get, you're more engaged, you have to do more. That's fine, like, we completely, but, like, you can play doubles 364 days a year. Like, we're here one day. Let's just try a new version and, and make the best of it and learn and, I don't know, pl just play the fours. Like, if you were to put us in clinic and it's like, yeah. it's three on three, we wouldn't be like, oh, sorry, like, I'm usually a setter. And <laughs> he plays middle, and so we're going to play six on six. And it's yeah. like, no. Just freaking figure it out. Volleyball is volleyball, which I think is also a reason why we play the way we play. Like, yeah, people watch Gage hit and they're like, he's a libero. And it's like, yeah, in one version of the volleyball that we play, he's a certain position. Play all the versions. But like in triples, in fours, in doubles, in short court, like he's just a volleyball player that just like plays. And that's what we've all done. So we can all kind of. If people see Joe go up there and smack it, they're like kind of shocked, and it's like, no, like we we play all like all different types of volleyball where we all are touching the ball in any certain way, so it's created a little bit more well-roundedness to us. So uh, all right, let's give I want to give you two a chance to explain the benefits of fours. Let's just let's talk about that. Let's argue for our case. Say like uh, you got to argue against this woman you're just talking about. Right. Like, what was exactly? What is, what is the case? Sorry. For why fours. What does it emphasize in in the different from like a doubles or indoor six on six? Like what is what does fours emphasize in your opinion the most? Um when I looked at our clinic, I thought fours was a better idea because we would have more rallies, the ball would stay in the air a little bit longer, and in turn you'd get better if, over a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. I think in doubles, um don't get me wrong, I think doubles at like is has a lot of benefits as well but sometimes doubles when you're working with some levels it's unproductive because it's really really short even at the highest level like if I'm gonna play a game of doubles like I'm not gonna get a ton out of it as much as reps because um, I it's pretty much pass you set me and I kill it like and then we serve them and it's pass that kill like right there's only two people on the court with fours it's a lot more people, a lot less court to get that's open. So now when I'm hitting, hopefully somebody's defending. Hopefully then we're gonna set it and hit it back, and hopefully someone's defending that. The other, the other thing. I would say longer round for sure. No, hundred percent. The other right. is the funny. I don't know if it's a funny thing, but I had like three or four people come up to me yesterday at the clinic, and they had like injuries where they couldn't swing and stuff. I'm like. Perfect. This game's designed yeah. for you. This is exactly what you should be playing. Then you just all you gotta do is play in the C and D position in the back row, and then you don't have to, uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about hitting or anything. I'm like, this is perfect. You don't have to do it then. The, what did that that one lady was literally like? Uh, uh, that one lady was like literally. She was, she said to you it was a. Uh, uh, she comes up to you. The exact thing she said was that. Uh, uh, so let's go a little more. You can you can you go for it. Is that she, what she said? She said that she comes up to you and she's like, yeah. "No, we don't." I was like, "Are we gonna ever play twos?" And you wouldn't. And then what'd you say? Well, the, she asked me ten minutes left. Was the exact? <coughs> she, was the exact thing she had said to you? She said, "Hey, are we doing this for the rest of the clinic?" And there was only ten minutes left, so I was like, "Um, yeah, we're probably gonna finish up like with this. Like, only ten minutes left, so we don't have a lot of a lot of time." She's like, "Oh, okay. Like, if I would have known this. Like, you, I would never. I would not have signed up. Like." This is just pointless. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And before she had done like some weird thing where she's like, what am I supposed to even do out here? And I'm like, uh, you can serve, receive, you can defend, 
You can sense him out of system. You can cover. You can talk. You can, like, be involved. Right. People think that you need to, like, give them a job and they can only do within that job. That's and, what like, I'm saying, bro. You know what I mean? Like, but it's like, no, no, no. Just, like, do, do play. Just play. Like, just play. I got two things to say about that. Two things. Well, first things first. Um, Force also emphasizes, especially playing with the big boy over here, Joe, you need to put that second touch close to that net in order to hit. Because right. there's no shots in Force. Right. Very rarely, right? Because right. shot, it's up. And obviously, we would free ball. They're yeah. going to have four people there to make sure that next ball is on the net so they can pound it down. Right. So you either got to get them out of system. Shout out right there. Come on now. Or. Right. No, you you like, no the like key to Force is getting exactly. them to have to somehow set. The pass is worse enough for the set. Exactly. Gets off the net. You can pull, or you can defend that a little bit easier, and then you defend it and get it back. So when it comes to like setting and putting that ball in the net, it's way more crucial for us than it is on twos. Like twos, mm-hmm. you can push off the net, kind of fall. Yeah, away, it can be three feet off whatever. and just yeah. get high line. Exactly. You can't do that on four, otherwise you're gonna correct. Correct. Now another thing I want to kind of talk about is about the different cultures in volleyball. Let's be honest. California is the best at volleyball. They're the best. They're the best culture. No doubt. Best players. And if you were to go to Manhattan Beach, if you were to go to Hermosa. Well, hold on. I think I think California men. I think the women. Oh, that's fair. I think it's beach like Midwest. Volleyball. I think it's Midwest is the best at what women's beach? volleyball. What about beach volleyball? We're talking about beach volleyball. We're talking about, we're talking about okay, beach yeah, volleyball. beach volleyball. You can see it in the in the UCLA USC final for the last. Exactly. I don't know how. Oh, well, Florida State's the beach. Be the beach is but all yeah, California. In California, but indoor Midwest for sure, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, but if you see the beach volleyball community and what sets them apart in California versus the others, and and I don't know if we're gonna see this in other states, but in the East Coast or whatnot, like I said, the better players are in California, right? right. And that's because one, accessibility to nets, one million easy, percent. Yeah. easy accessibility. There's it's, nothing like exactly. California. There's nets all up and well, down. Florida, there. Florida, there's, there's oh, okay. like that. But it's just. But it's just gnarly. Yeah. And so many people live close to it. Exactly. Two, it's part of the culture. They go out there and play every day. From young kids, you literally see, yeah. we see eight-year-olds running out there all day, every day. Yeah. Like, like, for, think of like a play date when you're younger, is like them, for SoCal, if you live in South LA, even, even, San, obviously, San Francisco, all those areas, all the, the volleyball hubs and whatnot, they're all just going out. That's, that's, that's their play date for the week, but rather than just going to someone's house. And... What you don't see over here is obviously there's smaller pods, and obviously they don't have that, right? Like Baltimore mm-hmm. Beach, wonderful facility, eight courts or so. Sick facility. Yeah, that's in the middle facility. of like downtown, and you're like on the water. And on the harbor. So sick. And and the thing is, is that obviously, so now you're stuck in these pods, right? Of whoever plays in the area, a lot of them are adults, and the young kids now got to play with the dolphins. Which is fine, they do that in Manhattan Beach as well, but. Now you're stuck with people who are stuck in their ways. We want to play twos. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do this. And they're not as open. You go to Manhattan Beach. You go to Hermosa Beach. You go to any other beach. You see them playing every type of volleyball. You Sometimes you're playing volleyball. Well, that's a really good point. I think sometimes it allows like people. Throwing the ball. Like, <coughs> it's, like, it's like different. They're on the volleyball court. They're doing different stuff. And they're open to that kind of stuff. Well, something that Force also does is that it allows a larger group of people to compete on the same court and it be even. Right. For example, like we play in these Memorial Day tournaments, we have people from Taylor Crab, Chase Button, exactly. Jack Troy Field, to people that are like sixty five and used to play, or like people that play maybe once a year. Right. And then it like works together, and it's like you only have to focus on as a four is like, hey, you just got to focus on getting this pass near the net. Right. And then play some defense, and like those guys get to be involved in that, and like play pretty high level volleyball. Yeah. Um. And if you say you have a kid in this pod, he's just starting out, you can't work him into a twos game. You serve the kid and then, like, the rally's over. Or, like, you serve and he sets it way off and it's like, it's not fun. But if you put a kid that, like, kind of knows he's peppered before, you put him in as the D to a fours game and all of a sudden he's playing in, like, a part of a really good game and it isn't as much of a hole, he's touching it a little bit less. So it's easier to work people in, too, with fours. Which we had a really big variety of skill, which is another reason why we're like maybe we could get them all, to, and we don't have, didn't right. have too many balls either. I mean, the moral of the story is like you you got to be like <clears throat> you're telling me that an Olympian and ABP players they're open to playing all locks of life because when we play fours, when we play threes, when we play doubles, because we play it all, everyone also has their own <clears throat> rules. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, this is how I play, or this is how, I, and it's open to changing them. Right? Yeah, everyone's... Tell, exactly. You can't tell me that you're living, no offense, right, in the East Coast where probably now it's a high-level ball, right? And you're like, 
and you're too good, <coughs> too good for what Olympians and professional athletes and whoever you look up to do. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And I think that's the problem with, like, what I've seen in the East Coast sometimes is, like, I'm, people just get stuck in their ways or they get in these cliques and everything, and it's not as much... And this could be for everywhere, because I Yeah, it could be definitely for everywhere. Yeah. I think I think that goes on everywhere. But it's, it's just, interesting, because the top... Once you hit us, like... If you're a dec- like, pretty decent high school player, I won't have problems... We won't have the same problem with him as we do as someone who's not at the same level. And I'm not sure if that's because they don't want to be out of their comfort zone, because maybe they don't have the skills to do everything, but, like... If you were really good in high school and we say we're playing fours, you're like, all right, sweet, let's play fours. Or, like, if you played in college and we're like, we're playing triples, you're like, okay, got it. But, like, if, you, if you're, like, a little bit less comfortable on the court, I think you tend to, like, be less open to things because you feel like, this is what I do. I do doubles. Like, I, I don't know how to do fours. I don't know don't how do to do that. triples. So that's also probably part of it is, like, the skill level amount, like, d- dictates how open we are. Like, if you were to throw, if we're, like, snow volley, yeah. we wouldn't be like, we're not doing this. We're like, okay, just teach us a few rules and, like, we'll figure it out. Exactly. Um, exactly. But I, I get I get that at a certain point where it's, like, to, like, put the, I just do Nervous. doubles. And, like, I don't know what to do when I don't have doubles. <laughs> and it's like, oh, doubles. Hey, hey, don't worry. It's still same sport. <laughs> three, three, touches. three touches and play with your side and get it down on the other side. It's pr- but it's, I don't know. It opens up your creativity and maybe people that... Exactly. Create, that's the biggest thing. <clears throat> different games, different creativity, different ways to win. People that are, like, stuck in doubles, you're probably not going to... If they're not willing to, like, oh, let's play fours, let's play triples, they're probably not, like, super high-level player. Yeah. Not to be... No, 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 you're right. I'm just thinking about the, the situation. You're right. And and I want to stress this. A lot of the people that came yesterday or... Because we not only... Oh, so came. sick. That was my yeah. favorite clinic. Yeah, yeah. Because those, for some reason... Baltimore knows the most about our system by far. Shout out Baltimore. Like, all those guys are so sweet. We stayed after for like, honestly, probably an hour and a half or two hours, just answering questions from a lot of the guys. Right. And we'll get, um, we gotta get to that a little. We actually played doubles because a lot of people wanted to play doubles. So we said, hey, we're gonna stay and play doubles. Um, but yeah, we're not just making. Favorite. So we're not just making these claims or the, our opinions based on our clinic yesterday. It was. Obviously, we were raised up in the right. East Coast. Uh, I, we've been playing around the sports so long. We're in different ways and grass football. Oh, yeah. People from everywhere. So this is not just something, oh, I went to I went to the Baltimore Beach and now I have this. <laughs> now I came to this conclusion. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no one million percent. This is not it. This is just something that sparked our mind and we we started thinking about how it has related to our entire life. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Now... Like Jeff, like I said, we st- we st- we uh, stay behind a little, play a little doubles. We ask a lot of questions, and everyone, it's awesome. It's awesome seeing obviously this because you wouldn't think, oh, let's go beach volleyball and ball for us. I mean, that's not something you'd think. I was surprised when Joseph had the clinic and everything. Right. But the sport is growing, and it's it's really really cool to see that. Um, but the biggest thing that that we found, or the biggest question, a lot of times, at least for me, I don't know how it was for you guys. Like, obviously, they're asking us about. A lot of kind of different stuff when it comes to just how do I get better? How do I do this? And how do I do that? First of all, that's the hardest question. Like, what's the hardest question for you guys to answer? For me, it's like, how do I, how do I get better at passing? I'm like, I, I was like, I, I try to ask for something more specific. And even then, it's just like, I don't know, like just going out. But then, but then don't you, wouldn't you just have them pass a few balls? <laughs> yeah, 100%. And you and can then, see. And then, then you go like, And the oh, biggest okay. thing, and the big, and, and so, so I always get, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I don't know. Like, I was getting the answer. And usually my answer revolves around is, I don't know why, but like we talked about before, but everyone loves to pass outside the midline and reach. And like really, when I, for me, when I really just try and like focus on my platform or whatever, that's when I'm worse. Because that's when my feet aren't moving. You know what I'm saying? Rather mm-hmm. than, obviously you guys got to cut a ball off like this. It's going to happen naturally. right? But if I'm just truly really trying to just go like this or go like this, not like in a natural motion, but I'm really thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, my angle's like this. And I'm like... It's like, don't, like, focus on that. Like, for me, it's like, don't focus on that. I mean, maybe if that works for you, then work for you. But the biggest thing, it's your legs, man. Your legs, you got to move. Yeah. And everything else will follow. Yeah. Everything else will follow. I mean, that'd be the, I mean, that'd be the ideal platform, or the ideal, the perfect, you know you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how it is for a sec. Milos. But, I mean, that's the biggest thing for me. It's like, just move your feet. And, and they're asking, like, how do I, I'm like, and also just play a lot. You well, know that's always my number one exactly. answer. Exactly, yeah. It's like, okay, so basically what you want to do is get a lot of reps. <laughs> like, oh, how do I do... 
basically what you want to do is get a lot of reps. I, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to like just like I don't even think about it like that, but it ends up like after I'm like, dude, I always just end up saying like, just gotta do it a lot. Rep it out. Yeah. Rep it out. To so people that want to get better too, you you definitely need to mix in a lot more reps than people think. Like, yeah. I know it's hard because a lot of people aren't like going to a club practice and like they just go show up with their friends and play. And it's so much harder, especially when you're doing like doubles or something like that. Like you might get one situation where you hit a nice cutting, you know, in like a 45 minute game. Instead, why don't you just for 15 minutes hit cutties back and forth with your friend and your partner and then hit high lines back and forth. Like you'll get, say you get a hundred reps in 15 minutes. You have to play like a month of volleyball to hit a hundred cutties yeah. in a good situation with a perfect pass, the perfect set, the block is how it is, and you hit a good cut cutty. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people out there, don't be afraid to like, if you're going to go play with friends, maybe the first 10 minutes, like if you're not just trying to have fun, if you're trying to actually get better and you're like getting frustrated that you're not getting better, please take the time to like break it down, slow it down, do one thing at a time. If you pass, you want to get better at passing, just like they might not serve you half the balls. They might miss one out of every three and then serve your partner one out of every three and you end up with one ball out of every three instead of 50 balls straight at you. You can focus on it. You can kind of rep it out and then play a game um, for fun if you want to do that. So that's our number one thing is like, dude, take the time. Yeah. Don't just – it's important to play to get a sense of awareness and all that stuff, but it's also important for a lot of people to get better at their touches so that they can, when they see something, do it in the right way. And also in a game, also just – for example, if you're working on shotting, shot the whole game or something like that. For that sure, way. for sure. It translates. <laughs> I'm not, what about you, Joe? What's the biggest question you usually get in like – What's the hardest question to answer, and what's your usually your answer to that, or a common question? I, well, going off your point, I think what you said is pretty good because I had a couple times they just walk up to me, like, all right, uh, like, but they they're looking for like a magic answer to like change. Exactly, yeah, like that's the biggest thing. Like, I can tell you like what you're not doing, but it's not gonna be like you're just gonna want to fix it, right? <laughs> yeah. right. Especially adult. We talked about this. Adult like kids actually are way more likely to kind of like. That something to switch like that. I mean, an adult who's right been doing something 30s, for so 40s, long. That's not going to be a really simple change, especially for, um, especially for some of the questions they ask. Um, but in general, I think the biggest thing is like, oh, how do you uh, see the core? How do I like? Um, how do I like anticipate better? I'm like, well, that's just playing. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be like something that you're just gonna all of a sudden see and <laughs> you're right. gonna be way better at anticipating. I'm like, you just got to go out there and play and be patient. That's way harder said than done. Right. Um, but I had that question like, actually a couple times yesterday. You got to get out there and play and, um, and just kind of get, you got some work on being patient and you got to get out of your comfort zone. So I say like, it sounds like whenever I say stuff, it just sounds like really <laughs> simple, but it's not a simple fix at all. I totally understand that. Right. But being patient, if you're just a super jittery player, like, Turn a cha- change and become like more patient players. Not easy. No, <laughs> right. <laughs> Chill out. <though. laughs> <laughs> I want it so bad I can freaking taste it. I want just something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> it's like like changes like that are like super yeah, difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no doubt. And it's just I don't know. It's. The ability to adapt in sports is like the most important thing. Oh, one hundred percent. And there's t- there's a reason why you have like elite level athletes, and then there you have everybody else. It's because those players are able to adapt. They're able to um, work on their craft at a higher level and be more focused <laughs> when they go into training. It's not like you have kids get bored of stuff, but then the highest level athletes could go in there for hours and just do the same thing. Like literally the most simple thing. Right. And do that and do that. And we talk about that at our clinic a lot. Mm-hmm. It's because when we go into the clinic, I think sometimes people expect at clinics, then they get this like out of this world like experience. But it's like, well, which we give, we yeah. absolutely give. <laughs> which that. we give, sign up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we're gonna get in there and we're gonna talk to you about we're gonna have fundamentals and wrapping it out, showing you like how we train. That's mostly the, right. what we're doing is like showing you like, the type of stuff that we do, um, and give you access to us. It's like. For like questions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right, sure. that's the mo- So I think the things at the clinics that's the most valuable that, like Joe said, we can't fix something that you've been doing um, 
wrong or make you an incredible player in two hours. Um, so what we put thought into it, we're like, what we can do is we can do a few things. Something that's valuable is introducing something new because then you can take it and go continue that on um, that you wouldn't have gotten before. And then like concepts, ideas, um, those kinds of things, and then access those your questions. Because like, I don't know, you don't, I, some areas are super underserved with good coaches. Like if you live in Southern California, you probably don't need access to us. Um, and it's not like we have all the right answers either, but um, we just wanted to go into some places that maybe um, AVP or professional um, volleyball players aren't coming through as much, like Baltimore or Nashville, um, not hot spots for volleyball. We can come in and answer any questions that people have and then show them something new that they can continue to do. Those are the two most important things, I think, that we can offer in two hours. But it's also kind of cool because everywhere we have gotten like, those places, there is a volleyball community there. And not big, really big but it's like, it's no, like, they're, cool. No, they're big time is. It's just sometimes in other places, it's a smaller niche. Yeah. And like, just what I'm saying, like, maybe, like they said, they haven't had an AVP there in like 10 years. And I was like, oh, when, when do you guys get to see these people? And they're like, oh. Fun. <laughs> yeah, we have it. Because remember the girl's like, oh, we love your girlfriend. And I'm like, Oh, maybe like you guys could see her at a tournament. When is the next one out here? And they're like, No, like nobody comes through. Here. <laughs> it's laughed no, yeah, nobody, nobody comes through. Nobody comes way. through here. Which is why we're like, oh sweet, I'm glad that we came. And like You get us you and my girlfriend? You get us. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> like, ooh, sorry, sorry about that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> sorry. But I just like rip. No, but also, uh, I don't know. It's just something we've noticed. But it's a good time. Again, Baltimore. Thank you so much for having us. Um, next stop, so next stop is obviously Pottstown. As this 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 episode drops, literally <laughs> as we're at Pottstown. Um, which are where's, where's our next clinic? Next clinic is gonna be up when we're in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. We'll be Boys Junior Nationals next week. Oh, we're Boys Junior Nationals. Mm -hmm. Come see what's up. Hey, oh, really right. about that really quickly. We're we'll be doing content and stuff. If you have a team or a director that wants to do something, we have a couple different options and a couple different packages. Reach out to us at assistant eighty eight at gmail .com or just DM us. Um, we can work with your team. We can come talk to your team. There's a couple different packages. We have a pack schedule, but reach out to us. We have a couple different uh, stuff to um, to throw at you guys, and maybe you can come do stuff with your team or your club. So, it's sweet. Now, like I just mentioned, reach out. Link below. Um, or the email's going to be below. But like I mentioned, this episode's dropping during Podstown. Um, uh, so that's going to be crazy. I mean, what I'm looking forward to that is, let me just say, I want to see the difference between, like, because obviously, is Podstown the biggest doubles tournament? Grass doubles, for sure. Grass doubles. Yeah. Uh, Motherload so. bigger? No. Is Motherload grass? Motherload's sand. Mother sand. more sand. Okay. I think it is one of the biggest I think it is doubles. Grass. Yeah, I think it is. I don't so. know if any that are going to contest it. That's a good point. So the opening of triples, and the good thing is, I mean, how many people are supposed to be there? Is it going to be like as big as Wapak? Well no, not quite, but it's yeah, not for triples. It's close there. It's pretty close. There's, the big thing is, for us, is also the juniors event. We want to see like juniors. There's a lot of juniors. Okay. I didn't know there's a fours event. It's fours a blind? It's weird. Blind? I've never heard of that. Wait. Blind? Blind genders. Fours. Gender blind. Gender blind. So you can have four like, guys? You can have four guys, but I think what they're saying is maybe you could mix in be polite and mix in a girl. You know what would be sick, but we can't go there on Sunday, is if we go. Because apparently there's like some guys, they just like put like four like gnarly guys and they go in. Right. If we got a girl, sick girl, and we went and won with the girl. Yeah. And these guys would be so pissed. Gender that. blind. Gender blind. But we can't be there Sunday. We got a, we got a jet. 2021. All yeah. tournaments are gender blind. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> That'd be insane. But honestly, the women's this champion, is, this Mike and <laughs> I'm trying to say this in the politest way possible. I don't think that's fair to girls. Yeah, that's fair. Like, if you're gonna do gender blind, so what? We have one volleyball team at UCLA. One team. Boys and girls can try out. There's not a lot of girls that are gonna make that team on an eight foot net. Right. What about a seven four net? They're still not. <laughs> I think maybe a libero. Let's go. Mm, even then, on an eight foot net. But even yeah. then, on a seven four net, maybe. But man, it's a difference. Actually, maybe not, because men hitting on a seven four net. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be dangerous. That's dangy. That's way too dangerous. So that's my own personal take on the, wait, the wait. gender blind. Is that I don't know. I think it should be more woman men. 
Yeah. And something, there's a solution besides making it where, like, gender, gender blind would be dicey. You know, Especially like, with college teams. Or, yeah. like, a USA team. There's one USA, te- USA team that goes to the Olympics. Gender blind. You know the weird thing? That's team. messed up. That's fair. That's why we have Title IX. So that we have equal opportunities. Right. Which also doesn't create equal opportunities for some situations. That's true. Because of football. Fair enough. You know what's weird to me? Yeah, the weirdest thing, I'm like, hey, what was this They're like, I'm a DS. I'm like, you mean LeBaron? They're like, no, I'm a DS. I'm like, <clears throat> what the, what's the freaking difference? Like, but that's the There thing. is a difference. Though. Yeah, but that's so weird. Just say you're libero and I play DS. Like, I'm not going to say, uh, I'm, oh, because if you're, because, I'm the backup right. outside. Like, <laughs> like, like, right, like, right, 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 right. Like, that's like the weirdest thing to say. But to also say. then that's nice because they know their role. Yeah, but and like they're and it's like I'm a DS. I go in yeah. for their are especially in the I was a DS, time. but I said yeah, I'm a libero, uh, but I go in and I serve and I stay through your rotations and I'm out of there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like my position is not DS. That's right. Play your position game. that you're hoping for is libero. Exactly. That's yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Right, right, right. 100%. That makes sense. <laughs> Back up libero. Learn about it. <laughs> you know about me. I'm the fifth outside. <laughs> if he gets hurt, and then he gets hurt. Then it's my turn. <laughs> no. One more. Yeah. He one more injury. Which happened. I don't know if you heard about that. Where we were playing oh, that's what I in Wooden. And we lost. We literally didn't. We had one outside. So our back of the barrel played a set. Pull it, Garland peed. Garland played a set? Yes. Is because this is right? what happened. We had a Mormon. And it was a Sunday. So he's out. Ian? Yeah. <clears throat> we had... Two red shirts, they're out. We didn't want to break the red shirt year. It was already at the end of the year. We had Dylan Mystery, who left the middle of the game and is throwing up in the bathroom because he had a concussion. We had Sam Coburn have an autoimmune disease. So that's five of our outsides. Now, I had to go outside, and then Not a our, backup, our backup libero had to play outside. How was he? We just passed. Do you ever get set? I don't think so. Who was it against? I want to say it's Grand Canyon. You beat them? I think we won. That's embarrassing for them. I think we won. But that's gnarly to go to your seventh outside. Well, that's so all you fifth you outside you, out you, there, it can happen. You can't consider it your, might happen. You can't consider it. Their hopes up, Mike. Be ready. Stay ready. <laughs> get their hopes up. Stay ready. Your fifth is your fifth outside. What? You, you can't consider your red shirts one of the first couple outsides. They were. In front of a back of a barrel? They're, yeah. they're in front of it. Yeah, but yes. you can't... If they're they not, are... No, there's Joe, a certain I'm not point, listening There's a certain that. point in the season where you, no. can't, you can't put them. Like he says, the end of the season. There's right. zero. They're not even in the depth game. chart. Depth they're at, the, no, end, they're at the end of the depth chart. But the, when we the practice... The back of a barrel is in front pra- of them at that when point. we practice, those two are out... Yeah, like, but if they don't play, who cares? You can go get a practice player. and the same. This is the same player. Same thing. No. It's like Jake Myers playing on the Cal Poly girls team. He's not on the depth chart. If he can't, if they can't go in the game, then they're not in the depth chart. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, and thanks for the blessing. Kazoon tight. Kazoon blessing. Appreciate that. Kazoon tight. tight. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're blessed. You've been blessed. No, but technically they're... At a certain point in the season, Oh, my gosh. Am I wrong? If they can't go in the game, how are they in the depth chart? If they put the libero in front, in front of them, at a certain point, now the libero is Because on the, the team, chart. this is why, this is why. There's, there's a depth chart, right? There's yeah. everyone that's allowed to play. And then there's other people at that position. Okay. If Garland Peed wasn't outside, he would be fifth. But he's not. <laughs> we get he's that. literally not. <laughs> but. So he can't be on the depth chart of outsides. We had to go outside of our five outsides that we have. Because three are eligible to play and then yeah. two aren't. And they're at the very, very bottom of the outsides. And then we had to go to our libero. Okay. So who's not an outside at all? So he's not. He shouldn't be there either. Okay, let's be honest here. All coaches have a literally sometimes written out depth chart, right? And you could see, okay, you right. can see it here. But let's be honest. A lot of time, let's say it's at the third middle. The third middle. If the second middle goes down, that doesn't mean that a lot of the time that third middle isn't playing. Let's say they have a really athletic guy that just, that they're like, okay, we're gonna put him. There's always a guy. There's a lot of time. There's a guy that they trust in front of him to put him there. For example, I don't our, know about the third our, middle is a bad example. Okay, let me know what you're saying. For example, for example, for example. My freshman year, his junior year, Brandon Rashad was our right side. For some reason, our coach did not trust him. We had Stein on the outside, 
We had Rattle on the right side, and then we had Rosie on the outside Correct. as well. Right? Now, let's say if Rattle were to go down. Stein is he gonna go to that? Is he gonna go to his second option? Makes Absolutely sense. not. Stein is now gonna go to the right side. Let's throw sense. another outside in there. So just because he's on that depth chart, that doesn't mean that's just how it's gonna go. Very true. That. But in this case, I have a feeling Sprague didn't trust Garland Pete as an outside more than those two red shirts. Right, 100%. But as, like I said, at a certain point yeah, in the season, they know he's got a game. It doesn't yeah. matter. At a certain point in the season, like you said, they're at the end of their season. Yeah, they're at the then bottom. They're no, then they're, then it doesn't matter. They'll throw a, a freaking middle out there sometime before they throw the red shirts out there. All right, yeah, I, I get that. I can hear that. I can hear that out. Just saying. I can so, hear that out. That's fair. Rat try no disrespect. Bless up the rat try way. I trusted you. Um... <laughs> Wait, I want to hear you talking about this the other day. Yeah. I want to talk about Leon. Afraid of Leon? Yeah, yeah, You said this in the car. Oh, right. You said this in the car. Right. So, these guys don't follow, like, international volleyball as much. Sorry, by these guys, I mean Gage and Jake, who's our cameraman. <laughs> Jake, Jake the cameraman. I'm Jake. pushing for it. That's Jake makes loves the camera. Jake makes cameraman. Um, but Jake. me and Joe obviously do. I don't know, Joe. Have you heard this story? I heard that the, somebody found him a wife. I didn't know the part about the Okay, Foley. so, Wilfredo Leon, this is a story that I've heard from multiple people, so maybe it's true, maybe it's not. And if you know, I want to hear in the comment section. So, Eric, particularly you, if you're listening to Who's this. Who's Eric who? Eric Shoji. Eric, if you're listening to this. <laughs> Please correct us in comment below. Anyways, what I've heard... There was a lot of people trying to get Wilfredo Leon. He's defected from Cuba. He's one of the best players in the world. Most people would say he is the best player in the world. Um, and so everybody wanted him. Poland presented him with three women that he could choose to marry and then become a Polish citizen and then play for the Polish national team. That's a story that I heard. So did everyone offer women? I'm not positive about that. To the United I States. have a feeling, Some yeah, off. because it's 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 he pretty offered the goats. Coach, the coaches, uh, coach, they offered him goats, <laughs> goats and milk. Some of the guys, like, the coach, was like, you can take my wife, just get over. She's like, what? It's like, here's my wife, my house, and my three kids. Please come play for us. A little great. Like some some like not great team. Egypt. <laughs> the Egyptian guys are like, all right. This is what we're gonna do. They all just huddle up and like, what can we? Get? Kind of Every guy. single one of our wives <laughs> can be yours. <laughs> the Americans, what would be the best like to offer from America? If they were, if they, would Whose the, wife would be the best to <laughs> offer? Oh, Lord. Can't handle the heat. Whose wife? Mmm. Let's think about it. <laughs> How many wives are on the team? Nah, nah, nah. That's disrespectful. <laughs> but, I don't know. There's some good things to offer as an American. But I don't think we went after them. I don't know why. Give them but a like, oh, yell. for people that don't know, so a lot of the Cubans, they defected. Um, Fred Leon defected at a young age. I'd heard of something about his defection story, but basically he snuck out of the hotel um, at like 2 or 3 in the morning, left his backpack, left everything, um, didn't even get to say bye to his family because if he did, maybe somebody would find out. Um, so it's gnarly. These guys used to have to defect. Um, another great player. One of the best ways in the world. Um, Leal is playing for Brazil, and he's Cuban. Um, Simone was gonna he had, was gonna play for Bulgaria, which is really interesting for, to me. But he oh, was some good wives. He was some gonna play wives. for yeah, maybe I don't know. <laughs> but he's gonna play for Bulgaria, but nice. then they changed the rule. Cuba let their players from international like clubs come back and play, and then leave. Um, and so now he went back. And Juan Torreno. Juan Torreno was Cuban. And Juan Torreno is Italy's best player, and he's Cuban as well. So Cuba would by far, like, they were, like, all, like, 22 up. Leal and Leon, at least. They were, like, 22, 23 and they, when they, they were younger. And they lost in the World Championships. Was it younger. Or something? Younger. Which is nuts. That was right before the Olympics and everything. I yeah. It's so crazy. So they would by far be the best team in the world right now. By far. And, and, yeah, it'd be scary because you'd have three of the best outsides in the world. You'd... Leon, Leal, and who, Montreno. Who would be the right side? Leal. Leal. I feel like Leal. Leal. Probably Leal. That's insane. Well, lucky for everyone else. <laughs> they're I know. Goners. And now they're helping teams all over the world. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, boys. Sponsored by Cuba. 
I want Italian to... team sponsored by Cuba. Brazilian <laughs> team sponsored by Cuba. Cuba. Really though. All right, well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is probably the nicest bathroom we've done this podcast in. It's toasty in here. That's why you don't wear a sweatshirt. I learned that the hard way. What am I in my nose sir, bling? But this is like the nicest bathroom in Venice. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Compared to ours. So we're gonna be doing all of ours in the bathroom. So hopefully I don't know why. I, I beg Gage to do this on the couch. We've been I, I don't we wanna stand up for forty five minutes. We've been in the begging him. No, let's do it on the couch next time. Alright. In the bathroom. We're bring the couch. To the oh <laughs> Well, boys, <laughs> couch in the back. <laughs> well, again, if you're listening right now, we're 100 percent hot sound, and make sure you check out our Instagram stories and whatnot. All the games we post. Get that merch. Vlogs, get tank merch, tops exactly. and the tour shirt will be there. I wonder if they're watching this ad hot sound. True, if you're watching hot sound, much love. It's um, all in the trailer. This will be in the trailer. Oh, this will be. The Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, Mike and Ma, Joe Wars, thank you so much. This has been an episode, another episode of If Can't Hear the Heat, presented by Adam Assistant.